In a previous demo, we have looked at how we could make a database availability group. Now, the database availability group gives me high availability for my mailbox servers. Now, what I'm also going to have in my uh, Exchange 2013 organization is client access servers. And one of the ways that we can make these highly available is to use DNS round robin. So what I've done here, I've come to my DNS server. I've come into my uh, domain, which is datum.com. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a couple of records for my client access servers. So the first thing to do here is just come into the domain, right click. And what we'll do here is we'll just create a new host. What we're going to do here is we're going to call this webmail. And then what we're going to do is specify an IP address. And the IP address will be 172.16.0.21. Right, now we've done that, we'll just select add host. And then what we need to do is we need to create an identical record, but this time just change the IP address. So we'll go with webmail again. And this time we'll have an IP address of 172.16.0.22. And then we'll just add that host as well. So we've now used DNS round robin. Now the problem that we've got with this is really if one of these servers dies, DNS doesn't know the server's died and it'll just keep timing out on every subsequent request for webmail. So the other way we can make our client access servers highly available is to use network load balancing. So what we'll do in order to do that is first off we need to install the network load balancing feature onto our Exchange servers. So I've got Client Access Server 1 and Client Access Server 2. So let's first off go to LON CAS 1. So what I've done here, I've come to LON CAS 1, I've come into Server Manager, and what I want to do here is I want to add some roles of features. So we'll highlight Add Roles Features. Wait for this to finish off collecting all the data. All right, that's collected all the data, so we'll add Roles Features. And then what we'll do at this point here, we'll just select Next. Then we'll go for a role-based or feature-based installation. We'll select the destination server, which is LONCAS1. Then what we'll do in the case of the server roles, we're not adding any additional roles. We want to add some features, so we'll select Next. And then on the features here, what we want to do here is we want to install the network load balancing feature. So we'll scroll down a little bit here. And we'll just find that network load balancing feature. There it is there. Add all those additional features as well. We'll now select Next. Select install, and then we'll leave this to install. Now we need to do exactly the same thing on LONCAS2. So let's swap over to LONCAS2. So exactly the same thing here on LONCAS2. So we'll add some roles and features. We'll then select our next button. Role based or feature based installation. We'll go with LONCAS2. Not going to bother with any roles. In case the features scroll down. Just found our network load balancer. Add these features, select next, and select install. Now this is going to take a few minutes to install the network load balance feature on both of these servers, so we'll just pause the demonstration and return back once the installation is complete. So client access server installation is finished on LONCAS2, so we'll just close that down. We'll just have a look at LONCAS1. And also, installation is complete, so we'll close it down here. The next thing we need to do now is actually just create our load balance client access server cluster. So what I'm going to do on LONCAS1 here, I'm just going to come to my tools. And under my tools here, what I'm looking for is I'm just looking for my network load balancing cluster. So there we go there. Maximize this up a little bit. All right, so let's just create the cluster. So we'll click cluster button here. We'll select new. Then what we'll do here, in the case of the host here, we'll just put in our host. So, lon cas one click the connect button, see the IP interface, we'll select next. Don't need to do anything additional here in the host parameter, so we'll select next. And what we need to do here now is we need to set up an IP address for our network load balance cluster. So let's just select the add button. And then in the add IP version 4 address, we'll just type in the IP address. And we're going to use 172.16.0.6 and 255.255.0.0. I'm not going to bother with IP version 6, so we'll select OK. Happy with that, so we'll select Next. And then all we need to do here, just in the cluster IP address information here, is just have a look through here. And just specify the name. So I'll put in webmail.datum.com. I'm actually going to set this to multicast for my cluster operation mode and select next. Then just on the port rules, I'm happy with all of those, so we'll select finish. Alright, so it's now going to create the cluster. 
And the last thing to do here is just add in LONCAS2, so we'll just right click on the cluster, we'll add a host to this cluster. And what we want here is we'll want LON hyphen CAS2, let's connect through to that as well. Select our next button, select our next button again, select finish on the ports, and it's now going to add this to the network low balance cluster as well. And as we can see, we've got green, that's good, everything's converged. Next thing to do here is just set up our DNS record for our network low balance cluster. So I'll just move to my uh, DNS server. And what we had earlier on is we were using round robin, so we're not using round robin anymore. So we can delete that second record. And all we need to do here is just modify this webmail record here. And we just need to modify it so that it's pointing at the IP address of our network low balance cluster. So select OK at this point here. And that's all done. And that's the end of this demonstration. Thanks very much.